In this speech, we see that Lady Fatima alayha, when she comes to the masjid, she is covered with, surrounded with Bani Hashim, with some of the ladies, uh, and also from with some of the servants, in a way that uh, her modesty is protected. This is a well-known khutbah, well-known speech, and we want to, inshallah, benefit from it. Um, we have from Balagatul Nisa, uh, which is actually a book that is compiled from the speeches of the ladies. Her speech is there. The speech of Lady Zainab is there. And this is one of the oldest sources. And this is a source about uh, over a thousand years old. And Ilah, mashallah, in our sources, in Shia sources, we see this khutbah. Sheikh Sadiq brings it, Sheikh Mufid brings it, Tabar Sin Ihtijaj brings it. And in general, we see that there was a emphasis from Ahlul Bayt Salam to try and have this khutbah be memorized, remembered, because um, of the situation that Lady Fatah was in. Many people tried to erase this khutbah. But when Allah wants a khutbah or a uh, manuscript or a hadith to be recorded for us and for, and for history to know, he will preserve it. Alhamdulillah, this khutbah has been preserved. So today we're going to go over from the beginning. There's a few concepts in the beginning of the khutbah that we'll go over. So on that day, what happened? What happened on that day that Lady Fatima came to the Masjid al-Rasul? She was having and wearing a, a worn, wearing a long dress. And in her way of walking was similar to the walking of the Holy Prophet of Islam. There she heaves a sorrowful sigh from her scorched and aggrieved heart, such that all those that are present were affected by it and began to weep. So the beginning she starts of this khutbah, she begins with praising Allah. As you know, we praise Allah, we are thankful of Him, no matter what situation that we're in. And we see here very beautifully, Lady Fatima talks about the blessings of Allah first. And this is a custom that we have, that first in our khutbahs, we say, or in say Surah Al-Fatiha, we have Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So she has Alhamdulillah, Alama, and Am. Um, praise, be, praise be to Allah for His bounties. So this is the first thing that she talks about. And that is how it is uh, formally a speech that we have in uh, Islam or when we, from the Islamic teachings, is to praise God first. وَلَهُ الشُّكْرِ عَلَى مَا أَلْهَمْ And thanks to Him for all that He has inspired and that ilham that He has given um, and that ilham which is inspiration or a way of communication through the heart and not knowledge through the, the mind. It is inspiration that is through the heart and, and giving information through the heart. وَالثَّنَا بِمَا قَدَّمْ And commended us for his name and for all the bounties he created before our own creation. So we're going to read these few lines about uh, shukr and about being grateful and about praising Allah. From all the common bounties that he has bestowed us from his own self, without even our asking for it. So imagine, this is uh, Lady Fatima. She is, has many different trials and tribulations that she herself is narrated of saying that if these trials and tribulations were to fall on the day, it would become night. So she is thanking Allah. And this is one lesson, brothers and sisters, that we need to keep in mind, and I tell myself. In our life, we might have the most drastic of trials and tri tribulations. We might have hosn, and hosn is not reaching what you wanted. You wanted, for example, different things in this world, and it just didn't happen the way you wanted it. And that is what grief is. So it's very important when you have these effects. And the world is like this. I mean, this is the nature of the world. It's Allah is our Lord, and we'll talk about, inshallah, a little bit, the second part 
where Lady Fatima talks about Tawheed, Allah very, uh, Lady Fatima very clearly talks about Tawheed and the unity of God, in that Allah is going to be uh, commanding us and controlling this universe however He wants. So a lot of times when we don't receive what what we want or um, how things were meant to be, it just does not happen. A lot of times we might now the billah lose hope, lose hope in du'a, lose hope in Allah, lose hope uh, in in ourselves, and that is not what we're supposed to do. Brothers and sisters, we're learning from Lady Fatima that the first thing she does in the face of calamity is to thank Allah. Because that is what, when someone is close to Allah, that is when, what they do. Because they realize everything is from Him, and that everything is khair, everything is good. And not necessarily what we plan, and what we think is khair for us, is, is good for us. Uh, so we have to trust Allah, trust what is occurring in our own personal lives, no matter how difficult it is. Such plenteous and unlimited bounties whose numbers cannot be computed. So this is the way that we learn to talk to Allah. And then we even have the ways that, you know, to do dua, it is to, to praise Allah first, to talk to Him first, to thank Him of, uh, you know, the bounties that, that He's given us. So this is a very uh, important lesson. And thanks cannot be offered for the duration and commencement of the bounties and whose uh, perpetuity is beyond comprehension. So when we look at hadith about one of the ways that Ahlul Bayt salam and the best ways that the wali of God has reached Allah, it is by being grateful. And that is the door to getting more bounties of Allah. And that is the door to Allah increasing you in your faith, increasing you in your own existence. From Imam Sadiq salam, we have such hadith that man u'tiya shukr u'tiya ziyada. Whoever is granted the ability to be thankful is also granted increase in bounties. And then he mentions la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you are grateful, I will surely increase you in your favor. So Imam Sadiq is saying, whoever is granted the ability to be thankful, he's also increased in bounties. The problem that we have, brothers and sisters, is that many times we have bounties, and these bounties sometimes are hidden from us, are much hold from us. So we see that there are Allah gives us bounties that sometimes we don't even look at them. The health of ourselves, the health of our family members. And you realize that if you had all the money in the world, you would give it just to remain healthy. So there's nothing higher than, than health. And the hadith, of course, talks about higher than this is the health of the heart and the health of the spirit. When you talk about shukr, Raghab Isfahani, who has a, um, has a, a very well-used dictionary, a shukr tasawwarun ni'ma. says thankfulness is this, a contemplation of the favors of God, that you think you have uh, these favors that God has given you, you are thankful, you are contemplating them, you are thinking of them, you do tasawwur of them, you, you mention them in your mind. Wa and its expression. So thankfulness means that you express, when you, when you are grateful, you, you also express your thankfulness. And when we look at different hadith, Sometimes we think that um, a common misconception that we have is this, if it is that I can ask for you, is sometimes we think that the best way to reach Allah is um, just for miseries and calamities to happen on us to be, and to be patient. My question to you is this, which one is higher, having patience or having um, being grateful in times of ease even. Now being grateful in times of pain, that is something for the wali of God. You know, that is the highest of positions. That in, say, the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he talks about his thing, he thanks Allah 
you know, that's for the wali of God. And, and during very difficult times, he even thanks Allah. Not only do you have patience and uh, calamity that follows you, you thank God for it. He said, Alhamdulillah. So, but which one is higher, gratefulness or patience? Let's read this tradition from Ahl al-Bayt And the hadith is this. It is in uh, Al-Kafi. An Abi Abdullah alayhi salam qal qal Rasulullah so Imam Sadiq narrates from the Holy Prophet of Islam a ta'im a shakir lahu min al aj ka ajr al sa'im muhtasim so a person feeding himself that is grateful so a ta'im someone who is feeding himself lahu min al aj has the reward of the fasting person ka ajr al sa'im Al Muhtasib, a, a person that is fasting who brings himself to strict account. When you're fasting, you have to be very careful. So, someone that is eating in this narration, his reward is equal to someone that is fasting. But as long as he is thanking Allah, right? So, sometimes we have types of delicious food they bring for us, sometimes we have a lot of bounties of this world. A home that we like, a car that we like, health. And then we say, Alhamdulillah, you're very grateful. Or you have, you eat a meal and you say, Alhamdulillah, you thank Allah. So this is equal to a fasting person, very beautifully. A person feeding himself, someone eating that is grateful as reward, is like a person that is, you know, a strict account. Then it says here in the hadith, so these are equal. Sometimes we, we get confused. We always think that, okay, if a person's fasting, he's, his worth is, his fasting is much better than a person that is um, eating, for example, or a person that is you know, sick and has patience. That a per, he must be in a very high position, but it says here, al mu'afa ashak. Then we have this hadith, wal mu'ta ashak, lahu min al aj. Ajil mahrumil pane, and a person who gives charity with gratitude receives equal reward to the person, the pride, pri- deprived person who is content al qane. So according to this hadith, actually they're equal to each other. They're equal. A person that is patient in his suffering, in a person that is in, not in us, that is not in hardship. That he is actually in yusr, he's at ease, but he's thankful to Allah. Both of these have rewards. But the problem is this, is that when it comes to both of these, it is not in our hands necessarily. Sometimes we do have both of these uh, situations in our own lives. And the, the point is to be grateful and also to be, to be shakir and to be sabir at the same time. To be grateful and to be patient at the same time. In our lives, we might have situations where it is very beautiful and we like it. And then immediately you have to remember tasawwur and and think of this ni'mah that Allah has given you and you thank Allah for it. There might be situations, there are, everyone, this this world is covered with bala. There's situations that either with health, with money, with anything that you wanted didn't happen, which becomes hosen for you. You might be sad. And then you are patient. So in both of these parts of our lives, we are thankful and we are patient. We get rewarded for it. And that is the beauty of Islam. It means this, is that you're thanking Allah and you're being patient and connected to Him throughout your entire life. A lot of people, when they read, receive a lot of blessings, sometimes they forget. It causes them to forget their friends especially when it's material blessings. They forget their friends, they forget the society, they forgive to get back, to give back to their society, they forget um, Allah. They don't realize um, that these are all the math of Allah. And we're going to talk about al Bayt besides Lady Fatima, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, look how beautifully in Dua Arafah. Dua Arafah is the dua that you do in Hajj. Uh, on the day of Arafah and those that are not in Hajj. Arafah is not only belonging to the Hujjaj, it is also for those that want to connect to God. In this du'a, Imam Hussein in the same way, 
He says, as your bounties are so uh, immeasurable, which of your favors, oh my God, can I count in numbers and examples? How we had, you know, similar to his mother in, in Khutbah Fadaki. How can I think? Or which one of your gifts can I think properly? If I try my best and strive throughout all ages and all times, and if I live them to think properly only one of your favors, I will not be able to do that. If I want my entire life and I strive just for one blessing that Allah has given, I say thank you, thank you over and over, I cannot fully thank Allah for it because we truly don't understand how great of a blessing that that one thing is. We want to change ourselves in a way that we can be a true monotheist. So, and a wali of God is a person that even in the face of difficulties and pains, they still remember God and they thank Him. And they realize the good things that, that God has given them, not only because of one thing that He's missing in, the, in His life, for example. He's given us, if we look at it in our own lives, look at all the blessings that Allah has given us, either physical, spiritual, just emotional. And we cannot count just one of these Imam Hussein Ali Salam mentions for our entire life. So therefore, what we need to do is, even at the times of, I know that it is difficult, at the times of calamity, to be think positive. Think positive. And be hopeful and do not lose your hope. The problem of man, and when we refer to this khutbah, is that we do not recognize the gifts that Allah has given us. That's problem number one, if you want to remember it this way. Number one is we do not see the blessings that Allah has given us, and we are ungrateful. Truly, we are ungrateful. So that's the first thing. See what blessings you have here. Everyone has blessings. You can just the fact that you're alive, you have blessings. Don't be so negative. Think of first of all, recognize all these gifts that you've Allah has given to you. The second step is that we have to realize that these bounties are from God. A lot of times we think that, oh, it was my creativity, my hard work that caused me to have such uh, financial security, for example, or such sustenance. But that is not a monotheistic approach. Who gave you your mind? Who gave you your creativity? Yes, this world, you have to work for it. Nobody denies that. If a student wants to get good grades, they have to study, yes. But who has given you that tawfiq to attend those classes? Who has given you the tawfiq to be in such a situation, in, in such calmness, that you can actually study many children because of the situation that they have in their lives. They cannot study. They have to, in this world, we say they have to work at a very young age. They cannot even study. For example, different uh, capabilities and in, in situations that Allah has given you to perform uh, what you're doing. So step two, realize those blessings are from God. Realize everything that you have. If it's knowledge, it's from Him. If it's uh, rizq and uh, physical rizq, it's from Him. If it's marriage, children, it's from Him. Everything that you have, all bounties are from Allah. And, and it makes perfect sense. Unless you recognize that blessing and unless you thank Him for it, Allah maybe will not give you more. It's as if one of our ulama gives the example when you have food. You have to first digest that food, and then you can eat more food. When Allah has given you so many blessings, and then you don't even recognize it, you don't attribute it to Him, why would He give you, give you more and more and more? So maybe that's how we understand this verse that uh, in the Quran, in shakartum azidannakum, meaning if you're grateful, I'll surely increase your favor is after you realize that you have a blessing, after you realize it's from God and you're a true monotheist, then He's going to give you more so that you can become closer to Him. You can recognize Him more. But if you do not recognize Him more, why would He give you more favors so you don't recognize Him? The third step is this, is that you, that ni'mah, whatever it is, that you spend it in Allah's way. 
uh, and that is the, the beauty, that is the adornment of blessings, that is the zenith of blessings. The third step is whatever Allah has given you and given some more, some less, but you recognize that you have to spend this in the right way. Some He has given them political power. Some He has given them charisma. When they speak, people listen to them. So what does Allah want you to do with that blessing that He has? To know what's a blessing, to know what's from Him, number two, and to spend it in His way. Well, you use your uh, political power, you use your social power over people, that you have your influence, and you call people to good. You instruct them to good, you enjoin them to good. That is what you do, you don't enjoin them to bad things. We see today in these social apps that have so many uh, friends and followers. And just like any blessing, Allah will ask you. So you had so many people that were following you, listening to you, watching you. What did you do with it? Did you call them to me? Or did you call them to yourself and to your ego and your selfies and the foods that you're eating? What did you do with this influence that you had? And that's why sometimes when you think about this part, you get very scared that, Allah, if you give me so much money, if you give me so much influence, if you give me so much power, then I will be questioned. You know, and, and very beautifully in Nahj Balagha, we have that in Rizq, in hal hal you know, Haram Rizq, there will be Iqab in Nahj Balagha, in Haram, things that are sin, in provisions that are sin, there's Haram. But even in Halal Rizq and sustenance, there will be hisab, there will be accountability. What did you do? Allah gave you time, what did you do with your time? I gave you life, I gave you 80 years, what did you do with it at the end? What did you do with your life at the end? I have given you wealth. How many poor people did you help? How many people did I send to your door and you rejected them? Hmm? I've given you knowledge. How many people did you teach? For example, and I'm telling myself, brothers and sisters, so the more Allah gives us, the more we are responsible. And this is something scary sometimes. That is why sometimes you understand that Allah gives each one rizq to a certain level. He doesn't want to give them too much because when you get too much, uh oh, there's also going to be hisab, there's also going to be accountability. So we're going to have to be uh, answering for all those poor people that we could have helped. To all those ignorant people we could have taught. To all those saddened people we could have made happy and did ithal as surur And one of the, another problem that we have is this, is that many of times when we see blessings from Allah, we don't realize that they are from God. And when Allah does not give us that blessing, sometimes we become jealous. And that's the essence of jealousy. You have to remember that the way that we look. We did not create this, the way that we look right now. I mean, yeah, you can fix yourself a little bit, but in general, how we look, say how tall we are, um, many factors we have are determined by God Himself. So when it comes also to that other part of risk, which is not from you working for it, it just comes down. You've seen people that they don't really work too hard for things, and it just comes down to them. It's just easy for them. If we went to school, some people, it's very easy for them understanding things. They don't even have to do their homework. They don't really have to, they just read it, they understand. Another per person, they have to kill themselves. They have to uh, work day and night to be able to understand something. So each person has different blessings. And you realize that these Allah has given everyone for a purpose. And that we realize that if you did not do and spend from that blessing that you have, you have not done it shuk. So this is the third part of understanding to be a grateful person, that whatever blessing that Allah has given you, if it's health, what do you do with your health? If it's wealth, what do you do with your wealth? If it's knowledge, what, does, what do you do with your knowledge? If it's um, influence, charisma, what do you do with it? Some of our uh, pious people, if they didn't have enough money, to help people, they would use from their own reputation. They would spend from their reputation and ask others. This is, you trust me? Okay, help, you know, help this person. Or 
you know, you can give this as a loan to me and I'll give them back, give it back to you. So whatever we see in this world is whatever blessings we have. Even if it's say the eyes, Allah has given us good vision. Look at you know, halal things, look at beautiful things, look at the Quran, look at hadith with these eyes, these beautiful eyes. Look at the good, beautiful scenery and thank Allah. You know, very beautifully, Islam uh, mentions and the Quran mentions the different scenery and creation of Allah being an ayah of Him, being a sign of Him. It should, when you look at the beautiful mountains, the skies, when you look at the vastness of space, a space that is way greater than we could even fathom, and you see all the stars and constellations and galaxies, you realize that this is Allah. This is Allah's creation. You're coming from makhluk to khaliq, coming from creation to, to creator. You're looking at this design. What a beautiful designer we have. What a beautiful Lord we have. A person has organized everything so beautifully. So use your eyes to cause you to remember Allah. Use your ears that Allah has given you to listen to Quran, to listen to not my lectures, other lectures, beautiful things in this world. This is spending that gift that you have been given. Use that tongue for dhikr. Use that tongue to, for complimenting people. Don't use that tongue to bring people down, to make people upset. So inshallah, spend from these blessings. Recognize they are from God. Recognize them first that they are blessing. Don't be ungrateful. Because Allah doesn't give you one thing, then do you throw a fit. That's childish. Two, recognize they are from Allah. Allah has given, this, given me this blessing. And the third is to spend that blessing in the way of Allah. Whatever resource that Allah has given us, we spend it. Inshallah, we'll be of those that in the Quran mentions in shakartum la'azidannakum. And if you are grateful, then Allah will give you more. And then you're equal to, you'll not be fasting, you'll be eating, but you'll be thanking Allah and you have the same reward of a person that's fasting, inshallah. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه